you can get to the end of the long, long process and you manage to not identify with your, your mind and your body, what, what's left? Is there anything left? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, every, every meditation master I've met who seems like the true blue dinky dye verified enlightened teacher, and there are not that many, but the ones that, the ones that I'm confident are really enlightened, I don't know, they seem pretty happy. They seem pretty at, at ease with life. They seem pretty impressive, wise. There's something left. They don't just go into a coma, you know. They're still functioning, active, you know, very vibrant. Um, their their lives tend to revolve around helping others. Right? It seems to, yeah, gives confidence that it's going in the right direction. <laughs> But the question is, when they die, what happens? But even the Buddha wouldn't answer that question directly. What is it that is our true self? Or you could rephrase it differently and say, what is it that I identify with as being myself? How do we create this self? And what, is, what type of things do I identify with? It's an ongoing process that you can practice on many different levels. Now the sense of self is, the Buddha would say this is the crux of the issue. And that there is actually no true self but there are, it's like an impersonal process, the causes and conditions that give rise to intentions and then the intentions give rise to thoughts and speech and then it perpetuates and then we identify with it all. We identify with these elements, these elements, they're just natural elements that make up our body, but we identify with them and then we say, oh, this is mine, this is me, this is my body. And then the same thing happens with our mind. The stream of consciousness that's flowing by, um, just a series of, of uh, causes and conditions and impressions and, they, and then give rise to results and it keeps going and going and going and then we identify with it and uh, it's the identification which usually causes the problems. Right. So it's very helpful to, to look and see, well, Okay, what is actually, what do I mean by a self or myself? And what things do I identify with that create this, we call it the illusion of self. Right? Even just when we see something, it feels like I'm seeing something. When we hear something, I'm hearing something. And this is happening, sense contact after sense contact, seeing, hearing, we taste something, Oh, I like this, right? Every time, you know, every time a thought like that arises, it perpetuates this self-perception. So what we try to do is to, to challenge these perceptions. Challenge our perceptions and say, well, what, how much of these perceptions are simply arising out of a, a misunderstanding or a delusion? And how can we make our perceptions more and more accurate in accordance with what's actually occurring? And this is what we call gradual process of insight and developing wisdom. So there's no, there's no one key to it all other than uh, having the overall big picture and say, yeah, well, that's ultimately, that's, that's why we're doing Everything that we're doing, the whole lifestyle and the meditation, everything is to, to clearly see what is it that I identify with as being myself and where, 
where does that identification become attachment, which then leads to other problems. And if we let go of that attachment and identification, then actually that starts to solve the problems. It's a long process. <laughs> <laughs>